I'm Michael Weber, Artistic Director of Chicago's Porchlight Music Theater, premiering in movie theaters December 6th, 1945, with a screenplay by Dudley Nichols, based on a story by Leo McCary, and featuring songs by Jimmy Van Heusen and Johnny Burke, among others, The Bells of St. Mary's was a rare sequel that did as well, commercially and critically, as its predecessor. In this case, the Academy Award-winning Going My Way of 1944, and it became the first sequel to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture. Leo McCary was inspired to write the original story in tribute to his own aunt and childhood counselor, Sister Mary Benedict, one of the sisters who helped to build the Immaculate Heart Convent in Hollywood and who died in a typhoid fever epidemic. The Bells of St. Mary's tells the further adventures of Father Chuck O'Malley, played by Bing Crosby, as he moves to a new parish, tangles with Sister Benedict, played by Ingrid Bergman, and ultimately forges a friendship with her. After several serious dramatic performances, Bergman wanted to prove her versatility by playing a nun and coaxed a reluctant David O. Selznick, who had her under contract, to loan her out. Bergman researched her role by visiting a convent and meeting Leo McCary's aunt, who was his inspiration. The filming was pleasant and relaxed, and became even more so early in the production when the Academy Awards for 1944 were handed out. Crosby and McCary were both nominated for Going My Way, and Bergman was nominated for Best Actress for Gaslight. On Oscar night, McCary won, then Crosby won, Finally, Bergman won. Accepting the award, she said, quote, I'm particularly glad to get it this time because tomorrow I go to work in a picture with Mr. Crosby and Mr. McCary, and I'm afraid that if I went on the set without an award, neither of them would speak to me, unquote. Going My Way won seven Academy Awards. The Bells of St. Mary's was nominated for eight, though it only won one for Best Sound. However, it made more money than Going My Way, and was not only 1945's biggest grossing film, but was third on the list of all-time moneymakers to date, behind Gone with the Wind in 1939 and This Is the Army in 1943, and it became the most profitable film in the history of RKO Pictures. And here it is, as broadcast on the August 26th, 1946 episode of the Screen Guild Theater, with the stars Bing Crosby, Ingrid Bergman, and Joan Carroll repeating their film roles in The Bells of St. Mary's. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, Lady Esther brings you a rare treat, one of the most tender and beautiful screen stories of the past year, Leo McCary's The Bells of St. Mary's. It stars Bing Crosby as Father O'Malley, Ingrid Bergman as Sister Benedict, and Joan Carroll as Patsy. Lady Esther presents the Screen Guild players in The Bells of St. Mary's. Bells of St. Mary's, just a school song, you might say, and yet for some, it was a hymn, a litany, a dedication. (laughs) Oh, they tell me I made quite a splash at St. Mary's, the very first day I arrived, in fact. You see, Sister Benedict was head of the school, and she thought I needed a formal introduction. Children! Children! Children, this is our new pastor, Father O'Malley, and I'm sure he has something very important to say to you. Father? Well, children, you're going to see a lot of me in the future. I'm going to be around here a great deal, so you're going to hear the shortest speech ever made. This is a holiday. Everybody take the day off. Father O'Malley. Pretty effective speech, huh? Oh, I'm sure they loved it. Well, when we were kids, we used to just live for holidays. You know, we should never get too far away from our childhood. But you can't call a holiday just like that. You have to get permission of the superintendent of schools. 
Well, Father, what will we tell the superintendent? Well, I might give him a holiday, too. Oh, Father. <laughs> Father, would you like to look around the school? No time like the present, Sister Michael, without all those youngsters underfoot. It's a lot different from my school, all right. See, I could look out the window and see fields and trees and the old swimming hole. You know, hang your clothes on a hickory limb and the last one out finds them tied up in knots. <laughs> Where, Father? Missouri. Where'd you come from, sister? Well, I was born in Sweden, but when I was very young, I came uh, to... Pop, don't tell me. Minnesota. <laughs> well, that's right, Father. <laughs> I love the winter. I used to ski to school, and there was one big hill over... Oh, and then you had to carry him home afterwards. <laughs> oh, yes. You wouldn't believe it, Father, but Sister Benedict was a tomboy, from what I hear. So? Oh, I must admit I played baseball with boys. Oh, uh-huh, I guess you were pretty good with the stick. I used to hit over 300. Well, that was in the wheat belt. <laughs> I guess we all had it better than these kids, though. They don't even have a place to play. That used to be our playground over there. Where that new building's going up? Yes, we had to sell the ground. We needed the money to fix our school. They were going to condemn it. You know, it's too bad you don't have a nice new building like that one they're putting up over there. That would be the answer to everything. Confidentially, Father, that's what we've been praying for. You've been praying for what? That the owner will wake up one morning and give it to us. But who will wake up when and give you what? What? Mr. Bogardus, the owner. Now, wait a minute. Let's be practical. Let's face it. Does Mr. Bogardus know anything about it? Has anyone asked him? No. We've just prayed. We're relying on you to help us, Father. We thought you might talk to Mr. Bogardus. Well, I'll be glad to, sister. Only one thing. What? What'll I do when he says no? Well, now, what do you think Bogardus told me? No! <laughs> yes, he so did. In about seven different ways. Then he made me a counteroffer. He wanted to buy the old school and tear it down for a parking lot. Frankly, I was a little more than on his side. St. Mary's was old, and there was a new school not too far away. I was all for recommending the sale, except I hadn't figured on Sister Benedict. St. Mary's was more than a school to her. It was a shrine. And while she'd laugh with me when we differed over little things... Well, she'd fight for the big things to her last breath. The big things. I guess they began with Patsy Gallagher. Or should I say with Patsy's mother? You see, Father, my husband left me a long time ago. Thirteen years, to be exact, before Patsy was born. You raised her yourself? You've been supporting her all, all this time? Uh-huh. I suppose you're wondering as to how. So is she. She's getting to be a big girl now, Father. She's beginning to think I'm no good. I want to put her in your care before she finds out she's right. Well, I feel anyone who's as much concerned about her daughter as you are isn't doing too badly. If there was anything really wrong with you, you wouldn't give it to her. Then you'll take her, Father? She can live here at the school? Well, I, I think it can be arranged. I, I'll make a deal with you. Yes? I'll take care of Patsy, and you take care of yourself. Yes? Oh, it's you, Patsy. Come in. You sent for me, Sister Benedict? Yes, I wanted to talk to you. I'm concerned about the way you're falling behind in your studies. Now, if the work's too hard for you, I'll be glad to help. If there's anything I can do... Oh, I, I don't think so, Sister. I I guess I'm just sort of a featherhead. Don't you like school? Is it something else? Oh, you're holding back on me, Patsy. What's troubling you? Nothing, Sister. If you only would work a little harder, you would get good marks. We can send your mother a good report card. Oh, you you want your mother to be proud of you, don't you? Well, if you won't even talk to me. All right, Patsy, you may go. Thank you, sister. Hi, Pat. Father. How's she doing, sister? I'm afraid not very well. No? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Father, when we accepted this child, it was on your recommendation. We know very little about her parents. What kind of a home life did she have? Oh, you know, the, the usual... You said you met her mother. Yes, yes, I met her. Do you know Mrs. Gallagher well? Mm, yes. Yeah, you might say uh, I know her quite well. And uh, her father, did you meet him? No, no, I, but uh, heard about him. Are they separated? Mm, yeah. Oh. Well, is there anything else that I should know? Anything that would help? Well, no, that's that's all that I... Uh... Care to tell? Yes, yes, that's all. Did anyone ever tell you that you have a dishonest face? Hmm? For a priest, I mean. <laughs> hmm? 
I thought I'd drop in tonight, Patsy. See, how are you doing? How are you doing? Not too well, Father. What's the problem? It's an essay, Father. The Five Senses. The Five Senses. Oh, it's an interesting subject. What have you discovered about them? Nothing. See what I mean? Well, what are the Five Senses, Patsy? Well, to see, to hear, to taste, to smell, um, and to feel. That's right. Who's the essay for? Sister Benedict. Sister Benedict. Oh, well, then we'll have to take dead aim on this. See if we can get you an A, hmm? Now, let's see. Man is endowed with certain powers which we call the five senses. Now, if he has common sense, he can get great happiness out of life by using these powers within right reason. For instance, uh, you're happy you came to St. Mary's, aren't you? Oh, yes, Father. That's what I mean, to be glad you're alive. To be grateful because people are kind to you and to be able to see some of nature's great wonders, the budding of the flowers in spring the changing of leaves in the autumn, to be able to appreciate beautiful music, to be conscious of the beauty of tasting and feeling and hearing the things that are good for you, to be aware of why you're here. Oh, I could go on and on and on. Well, why don't you, Father? Well, let me see. Isn't that a piano? Uh Uh-huh. Well, aren't these hands meant to play it? Uh Uh-huh. And I think I will. What, Father? Go on and on and on. Every time you're near a road, Aren't you glad you've got a nose? And if the dawn is fresh with dew, aren't you glad you're you? When a meadow lark appears, aren't you glad you've got two ears? And if your heart is singing too, aren't you glad you're you? You can see a summer sky or touch a friendly hand. Or taste an apple pie Pardon the grammar, but ain't life grand And when you wake up each morn Aren't you glad that you were born? Think what you've got the whole day through Aren't you glad you're you? Well, Patsy, I'll leave you with those few little thoughts. What do you make of them? Well, Father... If you can't appreciate your five senses, then your life isn't worth five cents. That's good. Great. Well, I hope you do all right tomorrow. Thank you, Father. I feel much better. You know something? I feel pretty good myself. Quiet, children. Everybody quiet now. We are very fortunate in having Father O'Malley with us today. So we'll read some of our compositions aloud. Uh, Luther? Luther, how'd he get in here? We never knew. All right, Luther. Five senses. I like the t- t- taste of ice cream cones, especially strawberry. I like to listen to the Lone Ranger, Kyle Silver. I like to smell hot dogs at the ballpark. I like to feel, well, good. <laughs> now, don't laugh, children, don't laugh. Luther means he wants to be a good boy. He wants to feel good inside. Don't you, Luther? No, sister. What I meant to feel good is what... Like when the bell rings at three o'clock. When it's Easter vacation, better still. That's what I meant to feel good. <clears throat> well, after all, Father, it has both uh, honesty and imagination. Thank you, Luther. Now, uh, you, Patsy. The six senses. The, the subject I gave you was the five senses. Well, I chose for my subject six senses. Well, go on, Patsy, go on. The six senses, to see, to hear, to taste, to smell, to feel, and to be. And the most important is the last. The sixth sense is to be able to enjoy the other five senses properly. To be. That's what really matters. It's like a world inside us, and it's up to us what we make of it, through common sense. Common sense is an internal sense whose function it is to differentiate between the various reports of the senses or to reduce these reports to the unity of a common perception. <laughs> As William Shakespeare said... Save for the bell. Thank you, Patsy. Now, that was very good. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, amen. All right, children, you may go. <laughs> Sister Benedict, I, I really learned something. Oh? That Patsy shows a lot of promise, don't you think? Oh, definitely. Uh, what, uh, what are you going to give her? B, perhaps? Oh, no, I think at least an A. Good, that's fine. As a matter of fact, I think it should be an A plus, don't oh, you, Father? I don't know. That might be overdoing it a little. Oh, but it, it had a plus quality to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, a girl like Patsy needs a lot of encouragement. She has such a fine mind. Yes, remarkable. In fact, she has the mentality of a man your age. Hmm, well, yes. There's another sense, you know, sister. Oh, don't tell me. Yes, sense enough to know when to leave. Good afternoon. <laughs> The second act of the Lady Esther Screen Guild play will follow in a moment. Now, a word from Lady Esther. I want to ask you a very important question, and here it is. What part of your body has the finest, most delicate skin? The chances are you would answer incorrectly, because the correct answer is your face. Skin, skin specialists will tell you that the skin of your face is more finely textured than any other part of your body. That's why it begins to look old faster. Now, rubbing the skin of your face may break down the underskin structure, stretch the skin, start tiny lines that turn to wrinkles and make you look older. So it's only intelligent to use a cream that requires no rubbing. Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream. It's so soft, it practically dissolves as it touches your skin. You just smooth it on, gently wipe it off, and that's all. Yet without rubbing... A single application of Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream thoroughly cleans your skin, softens your skin, helps nature refine the pores, and it leaves a perfect base for your powder. The reason Lady Esther Face Cream does these four essential things to help make your skin look younger is this. It contains one of the most beautifying ingredients known to modern science. This helps keep your skin soft and pliable helps end dryness that causes little lines and wrinkles. Try this interesting experience with Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream. You won't have to wait 30 days or even 30 minutes for results. You will see and feel the difference at once. Hi, this is Porchlight Music Theater's Development Manager, Evan. If you value programming like this, please consider making a donation today at porchlightmusictheater.org. We appreciate your consideration and hope you enjoy the show. And now the second act of The Bells of St. Mary, starring Ingrid Bergman, Joan Carroll, and Bing Crosby as Father O'Malley, who continues our story. You know, the days skip right along when you're busy. School like St. Mary's can keep you pretty active. Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, and <laughs> then almost before I knew it. Oh, it's beautiful. I love that song. Yes, it's so fresh and gay. Sister Benedict should play it more often. Mm. Maybe spring should come twice a year. <laughs> How's that? Oh, Father O'Malley. Well, don't let me slow you up. Don't stop. Tell me, do you know uh, Birmingham Bertha? Oh, <laughs> Father. You know? Don't dig it. How about the school song, then? Oh, yes. Sister Benedict has a new version of it with effects and everything. She's a bit proud of it. Oh, and sing that. Won't you sing the melody, Father? Sister, you talk me into it. We never will fail Your chime will forever Bring sweet memories of you So proudly ring out While we sing out I haven't had a chance to do that in years. Yes, sir, couldn't blow that. Oh, yes, but it wasn't all laughs and music. There were some things that had me plenty worried. For one thing, that building next door was almost completed. Sister Benedict and the others went on praying. 
serenely, confident that it was being finished for them. Of course, no one had bothered to ask Mr. Bogardus. I shuddered to think what would happen when they did. That was one thing. And the other? Come in. Oh, hello, Father. Oh, don't get up. I'm just the pastor here. Well, you're grading the final exams, I see. Yes, Father. I ran into some of the girls out in the hall. You did? Yes, they were dying of curiosity. I was supposed to come in and, without your knowing it, of course, find out how they did. I presume you opened your heart and asked them all? All but one, Father. This one. Patsy? Oh, no. I am sorry, Father. Well, this is only one subject. Well, the others are even worse. Her average is below 60. Well, she got the date right and she spelled her name right. Couldn't you give her something for that? Add it up again, huh? Pass her, maybe? Don't you think the honor of the school means anything? Well, what about Patsy? She's just beginning to believe in herself. A blow like this, the child may never get over it. Father, believe me, my heart aches for Patsy. I've done everything possible to help her, but I must uphold our standards. If you order me to pass her, I shall do so. But her mark remains the same. Sister, you and I have had our little differences of opinion, but they haven't been important. This is it. This is serious. I'm not going to order you to do anything. It's up to you, but... But she failed. Mother O'Malley, I can't take it, I tell you. All those howling brats around the place. The building's almost done. We'll be opening up pretty soon. How am I going to work with all that noise? (laughs) How do I? Oh, now look here, Father. This is no joke. I'm a sick man. I've got a pretty bad heart. I wonder why. Hmm? What do you mean, why? Believe me, Mr. Bogardus, that's not just the pastor talking. I've got science on my side. Yes, sir. Scientists say that there's nothing ever wasted in this world. I was just wondering if that bum ticker of yours might have some purpose. Father, Father O'Malley, you'd better come quickly. What's happened? Sister Benedict had a fainting spell in the chapel. She's quite ill. I'll come right along. Uh, Excuse me, Father. Is that included? What? That sister, I mean. She spends her whole life helping others. And now she's sick. You think that's got a purpose, too? Who knows? The doctor's on his way, Sister Benedict. How are you feeling? I feel all right. Father, I want to talk to you. What have I done now? You've been writing. You've been writing to Mother General, going over my head. Oh. Yes, I received a letter from her. Well, I just wrote expressing my own opinion, sister. Hope this hasn't brought this on. No, 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 no. I'm just tired. But but you actually considered tearing down St. Mary's and sending our our children to St. Victor's. That's right. I, I thought about it quite a bit. We have to face facts, sister. Yes. Yes, I know what you mean, Father. We've tried so hard not to face facts, but but there, there must always be a St. Mary's. Of course. Of course, sister. Now, just relax. The doctor should be along any minute. Doctor? Yes, Father? How is she? Well, she's running a little temperature. I understand she's had these attacks before. So Sister Michael tells me. I hope it's not serious. She's such a remarkable woman. She certainly is. Didn't even want to talk about herself. Just about that new building next door and Mr. Bogardus. Yeah, she's done a heap of praying for both. Well, prayer's a wonderful thing, Father. But if Bogardus ever gives her that building, I'll... Up, up, up. Now, nothing spectacular, Doctor. Well, I hate to see her disillusioned. By the way, Father, how did you happen to call me in? Oh, I've heard Bogardus talk about you. He talks quite a lot about you. He talks quite a lot to me. (laughs) Calls me a dozen times a day. His heart's pretty bad, isn't it? Yes, it is. What are you giving him for? Pills? Why? Have you got a better prescription? Well, I knew a fellow once had a very bad heart. In fact, they only gave him six months to live. You know, he spent that six months doing so much good that he lived to be 90. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Yep. You mean doing good for others is good for a bad heart? Well, you spend your whole life doing for others, don't you, Doctor? Why... Yes. How's your heart? Fine. Hey, what? Father, are you tampering with the laws of medicine? Well, we have a good deal in common, Doctor. We're both interested in a good heart. And you're suggesting, perhaps, that I change my prescription? You're the doctor. You 
mustn't ask me what really did it, the sister's prayers or the doctor's persuasion. Frankly, I don't see that it matters with heaven and science teamed up like that. But anyway, just a few days later... Father O'Malley, you'll never guess the most wonderful thing, a miracle. So? Mr. Bogardus just came to see me, and Father, he's going to give, give us, us his, his building. building. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he just told me. How did you know? Well, I figured if faith could move mountains, sister, it would certainly budge Bogardus a few steps. <laughs> Everyone's so happy around here, Father. I I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Bad news, Doctor? Sister Benedict. Can she be sent away for a while, transferred to some easier job? What is it, Doctor? TB. Very early stage, and we're lucky to catch it. Does she know about it? Well, normally I'd tell her, but it's such a light case, I don't want to worry her. Oh, but she'll have to know about it. We can't just send her away. Don't you people more or less go where you're told without question? Yeah, well, we're supposed to have the stamina to take it. She has plenty of that. But you don't quite understand, Doctor. You see, Sister and I haven't always agreed on how to run a school. In fact, we recently had one serious difference of opinion. Now, if she's sent away without explanation, why she's bound to think... Father, that... up to here, we were discussing her health, what's best for her. Now, we're discussing your feelings. That's a heck of a way to put it, Doc. I only want to see her get well. That's the trouble, Doc. So do I. It's perfect, Father. The building can, can be used as a school with hardly any alteration. <laughs> as, if, as if God himself had been the architect. That's fine. And now we can finally tear down our old school and that can become our playground. Oh, it is all so wonderful. <laughs> and I am tired. You've been working too hard. Oh, it's just all the excitement. Oh, Father, I am so happy. I have only one more wish. One wish? Yes, that we have no more misunderstandings. Serious ones, I mean. Like Patsy, hmm? You still disagree with me, don't you? Father, sometimes we must do things that aren't easy. No matter how much they hurt us, we have to do what we believe is right. I have something to tell you, sister, that isn't going to be easy. What is that, Father? Well, you'll be notified shortly that Sister Michael will be in charge here next year. Oh. Oh. Well, she'll, she'll be so happy. And uh, I, will I be her assistant? It's only fair to tell you, sister, that you're being transferred. It's going to be difficult to leave St. Mary's, but we shouldn't become too attached to any one place. Any other school may seem strange at first, but as long as I'm around children, I'll be happy. Father, how do you know all this? Have you been writing Mother General again? <clears throat> well, yes, I have. Dear, dear God, help me. Dear Lord, remove all bitterness from my heart. Please, please help me to see thy holy will in all things. Help me. Oh, please, please help me. Sister Benedict. Sister, the cab is here. Yes, thank you. I'm coming now. Goodbye, Sister Benedict. Goodbye, sister. Sister Benedict, we know your heart will be here, and we'll always remember you in our prayers. Thank you. Goodbye, father. Goodbye, sisters. Sister. Sister Benedict, wait. Yes, father. Sister, I can't let you go like this. When the doctor said you were perfect, he was right, but that's what you are, but he didn't mean physically. But... Because, sister... You have a touch of tuberculosis. Then, then that's why I... Oh, the doctor, well, he felt... He felt we shouldn't worry about it, but, well... Thank you, Father. Thank you very much. You've made me so happy. 
I'll get well quickly now. Oh, of course you will, sister. Of course I will. And remember, if you ever need anything, no matter where it is or where you happen to be, just dial O for O'Malley. I'll remember, Father. O for O'Malley. I'm sure the pleasure has not all been ours. It must be a great satisfaction to you to know how much your appearance has contributed to the Motion Picture Relief Fund and his country house. And now, here is a word from one of America's best-known beauty authorities, Lady Esther. If you use a cream which must be rubbed into your skin, please remember this. The skin of your face is the thinnest, finest, most delicately textured skin of your entire body. Rubbing may stretch it, may take the firmness out of it may even break down the underskin structure and make you look older instead of younger. And so I ask you, why do this to your skin when you don't need to? There is a cream that requires no rubbing. Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream. This famous cream needs no help from your fingers, needs no rubbing in, no massaging, because Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream is so soft, it practically dissolves as it touches your skin. You just smooth it on gently. As it dissolves, it releases one of the most beautifying ingredients known to modern science. This helps keep your skin soft and pliant, helps prevent drying or puckering of the skin, especially around your eyes and mouth. When you wipe off Lady Esther face cream, you not only see the difference, you feel the difference from just that one application. You see that all your skin requires is this one scientific face cream, Lady Esther For Purpose Face Cream. It asks no help from any other cream. Next week, the Lady Esther Screen Guild players will present Weekend for Three. It will star Lynn Berry, Harry Von Zell, and Dennis O'Keefe. Be sure to listen. The Bells of St. Mary's was produced and directed by Bill Lawrence and was presented through the courtesy of RKO Radio Pictures, producers of Till the End of Time, starring Dorothy McGuire. The adaptation was by Harry Cronman. Bing Crosby will soon be seen in Paramount's Technicolor production, Blue Skies. Edward Bergman can now be seen in the Alfred Hitchcock RKO production, Notorious. Music on tonight's program was arranged and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. This is Truman Bradley speaking for Lady Esther. Thank you and good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Filming on the Bells of St. Mary's was overseen by a Catholic priest who served as an advisor during the shooting. While the final farewell sequence was being filmed, Bing Crosby and Ingrid Bergman decided to play a prank on him. They asked director Leo McCary to allow one more take, as Father O'Malley and Sister Benedict said their last goodbyes. The acting duo embraced in a passionate kiss, while the off-screen priest advisor jumped up roaring in protest. The screenplay of the film was later adapted into novel form by George Victor Martin. In addition to today's radio performance, The Bells of St. Mary's was again broadcast on the Screen Guild Theatre radio program October 6, 1947, again starring Bing Crosby, Ingrid Bergman, and Joan Carroll. A television adaptation of The Bells of St. Mary's was shown in 1959, starring Claudette Colbert, Robert Preston, and Charles Ruggles. While Bing Crosby had a prolific presence during the golden age of radio, Ingrid Bergman contributed to numerous radio drama series, with most of her nearly two dozen radio appearances coming on Lux Radio Theater and Screen Guild Theater. Ingrid Bergman also made appearances on Great Scenes from Great Plays and Radio Hall of Fame. Quality was the name of Ingrid Bergman's game, as her appearances were in adaptations of only the finest material. She reprised her roles in Intermezzo, Gaslight, Notorious, For Whom the Bell Tolls, and Casablanca. She also appeared in productions of Jane Eyre, A Doll's House, and Anna Karenina. Theaters across the country need your support now, more than ever. We hope you'll consider a donation to Porchlight Music Theater today. Just go to porchlightmusictheater.org.
Until next time on Classic Musicals from the Golden Age of Radio, I'm Michael Weber. Thank you.